Well, good day, everybody. Welcome to the Bible in a Year 2021, and we are on day 180. And today we're reading through 1 Kings 22 and 2 Chronicles 18. And um, this is one of the more interesting uh, people in the Bible that we're, we're looking at, uh, King Jehoshaphat. And here we're, we're actually recognizing his weakness. I mean, he has done well. He does well for the kingdom of Judah. Um, the Lord honors him and blesses him and blesses the kingdom. Uh, but we read here in the third year, Judah's king Jehoshaphat visited Israel's king. And, and we'll soon discover that this, this is the big weakness that he has because uh, he, um, he, he wants to see the kingdoms united. He, he wants to see uh, a, a very close working relationship, at least with the, the, the two kingdoms. Um, but King Ahab is um, oh, not a great king. And uh, remember that, that Ahab has kind of gone through a revival type of thing where he's, he has repented and, and uh, the Lord has delayed the judgment that's going to come in there. Um, but you wouldn't say that he is a good practicing uh, worshiper of Yahweh. Um, not where he is right now. He, he still is trying to call the shots himself. He's got all kinds of false prophets that feed into his life. Um, the false prophets that are supposedly connected to Yahweh, um, but have nothing to do with Yahweh and are just yes people for the king, obviously. Um, so Jehoshaphat is here. He's visiting uh, King Ahab. And uh, King Ahab invites him in, into a, a battle. Jehoshaphat has no fight a, at all um, with the, the Arameans, but he's being invited into this thing by Ahab. And, he, and he's kind of, we're going to discover why, but he's kind of obligated to this. So King Ahab uh, says to Jehoshaphat, will you go with me into battle at Raft, Ramath Gilead? Jehoshaphat said to Israel's king, I am with you. And my troops and my horses are united with yours. So he really ties himself in here. But the one thing that Jehoshaphat, uh, Jehoshaphat wants is, is he wants to hear from the Lord. And he, and he, and he says to King Ahab, before we go up, we, we, need, to, we need to discuss this with, with um, Yahweh. Um, so Israel's king gathered about 400 prophets, 400 not Yahweh prophets. They're supposed to be Yahweh, but these are the ones that he has chosen to speak into his life. And he asks them, should I go to war with Ramath Gilead or not? So guess what you would expect from yes people? Attack, the prophets answered. The Lord will hand it over to the king. Um, but Jehoshaphat, having the relationship that, that he does, uh, just knows that these guys are not speaking from Yahweh. And, uh, and, and he turns around and he says, um, and, and, and he says, is, is there, is there no, is there's no real prophet? Is there no prophet at all that, that we can, we can ask? And so Ahab turns around and he says, there's one other man who could ask the Lord for us. Israel's king told Jehoshaphat, but I hate him because he never prophesies anything good about me. Only bad. His name is Micaiah. Uh, Imla's son. The king shouldn't speak like that, Jehoshaphat said. <laughs> but you know what? If, if, you're, if you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing um, and the prophet shows up, then he's going to let you know you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. So that's, that's Ahab's problem here. Uh, you know, he, he may have a, a form of worship of Yahweh, but he certainly uh, does not know Yahweh's ways. And um, and isn't planning on getting to know Yahweh's ways. So here we have Micaiah. Um, and my question is, does he have a habit of lying to the king? Because <laughs> when this shows up, you know, when Micaiah arrived, the king asked him, Micaiah, should we go to war with Ramath Gilead or not? <laughs> And Mickey answered, I, I don't understand this relationship here. He says, attack and win. The Lord will hand it over to the king. But the king said, how many times must I demand that you tell me the truth when you speak in the name of the Lord? <laughs> yeah. So Ahab already knows what the answer is. 
Okay, the answer is no, that, that Yahweh does not want him to do this. He's got all his yes prophets. He has a real prophet show up and, and it tells him everything that the false prophets, and as soon as he agrees with the false prophets, the king knows right away that Mekia is not speaking the truth. And then he turns, as it's, you know, is this what he does all the time? It's just, you know, it's one of those questions. Hmm. Um, so then uh, the prophet turns around and he gives the real prophecy. And he says, I saw all Israel scattered on the hills like sheep without a shepherd. And then the Lord said, they have no master. Let them return safely to their own homes. Then Israel's king said, Jehoshaphat, didn't I tell you? He never prophesies anything good about me, only bad. So Ahab has this expectation. And, and when it was, was something positive, that was, no, this, this isn't right. Uh, like, you never tell me anything as good as this. So, no. And then, then he gives, <laughs> yeah, it's, didn't I tell you? Um, but we may understand why the prophet uh, would lie to him when he had to come before him. Um, because Ahab turns around and says, arrest him and turn him over to Amon, the city's official, and to Joash, the king's son. Tell them, the king says, put this man in prison and feed him minimum rations of bread and water until I return safely. And the prophet says, hey, if you return, I'm no prophet. <laughs> but yeah, who, who wants to be thrown in jail? You know, and, uh, and, and that's what happens. Um, and then there's more questions as, that, that's provoked here, okay? We read this in verses 29 to 30. So Israel king and Judah's king, um, Jehoshaphat, attacked Ramath Gilead. Israel's king said, Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself when we go into battle, but you should wear your royal attire. <laughs> Israel's king had disguised himself. They entered the battle. Okay, two questions here. Okay, uh, and, and I, I think I actually did a slide with these because I, I just want to point this out. Um, first question, if finding a prophet was so important to Jehoshaphat, why didn't he listen to him? Why didn't he listen to the prophet? Why did he still go into battle when the prophet is telling him it's not Yahweh's will for you to go into this battle? Right? I don't know, like, what, what's the sense of consulting a, a real prophet if, if you're not going to um, follow the instructions? And that's weird for Jehoshaphat. Like, what's going on here? Because this, this is a guy who absolutely loves Yahweh, obeys Yahweh, um, has gone through a bunch of reforms and, and everything else, um, has really brought the, the nation back to, to Yahweh. And yeah, what's up with this? The second one is, why would he ever agree to go into battle dressed like a king when the other king uh, went in, dis in, in disguise? A typo there. Went into, went into the battle in disguise. Like, what is wrong with you, Jehoshaphat? What is going on there? We see actually in Second Chronicles 18, 1, what was going on there. Um, even though Jehoshaphat already had great wealth and honor, he allied himself with Ahab through marriage. So they're actually now family. They're related. This is, this is how big his weakness was. He, he wanted so much for these kingdoms to be united that he married into Ahab's family as bad as Ahab was, um, so that they, they, they would have this connection, at least with, with the two of them. So now he's under family obligation to do these things, even though um, he knows clearly that he shouldn't be doing these things. So Ahab dies. Jehoshaphat um, escapes. And, and tomorrow we're going to look at more detail of what, what happens to his life. But right now we have this summary uh, of, of his life. And it's uh, in, in 1 Kings 22, verses 43 to 46. Uh, Jehoshaphat walked in all the ways of his father Asa. That's the earlier ways of Asa. That was made clear earlier, not the, not the end years, because Asa <clears throat> did not end well. Um, 
not deviating from it. He did the right things in the Lord's eyes, with the exception that he didn't remove the shrines. Uh, the people continue to sacrifice and offer incense at them. Because uh, remember, you're only supposed to make uh, sacrifices at the one location, which now is, is the temple. Um, and, and they weren't doing that because it's inconvenient. And so they had set up their own shrines. Uh, Jehoshaphat made peace with Israel's king. The rest of Jehoshaphat's deeds, the great acts he did, and how he fought in battle, aren't they written in the official records of Judah's kings? Additionally, Jehoshaphat purged the land of the consecrated workers who remained from the days of Asa. So, hmm. Then we, we read here, just, this is, this is some preparation. This is some preparation work that's going on for the destruction of Ahab's family, as had been prophesied, because this is just bad seed here. Um, this is the third, um, uh, yeah, this is the third king whose family is wiped out because just they're, they're bad seeds. They, they're just really bad. So in uh, verses 51 to 53, we read this. In the seventh year of uh, Judah's king Jehoshaphat, uh, Ahaziah, um, Ahab's son, became king over Israel in Samaria. He ruled over Israel for two years. He did evil in the Lord's eyes. He walked in his father's ways and his mother's ways. Um, that is in the ways of Jeroboam, Nebat's son, who had caused Israel to sin. Ahaziah. Uh, served Baal and worshipped him. He angered uh, the Lord, Israel's God, by doing all the same things his father had done. Mm. So we're going to pick up on that tomorrow. So this, these are interesting things, but but look for the relationships here. Okay, remember the relationships and and some things, some you know. We, we have, we, we we're supposed to enter into everybody's life. We're supposed to be friends uh, with, with everybody, uh, but it doesn't mean we align ourselves with everybody. There's only one who we align ourselves to. We never, we never uh, turn around and deny what Yahweh is saying uh, for the sake of relationships with other people. Those relationships are supposed to be uh, increased and blessed and wonderful, and they must be, we must have those relationships. Um, but it's because we are centered on, on, on Christ that we can have these relationships and not be destroyed. There you go. So you guys have a blessed and wonderful day, and uh, we'll pick this up again tomorrow.